Hey everybody, Mark Vo with Voline Outdoors. I got 900 subscribers in the last month, in the last 28 days. I'm ecstatic. And one of them got to talking about how small a bow can you still do string walking with? How small a bow can you use the Voltland shooting method with? But first, roll them. And one of them got to talking about how small a bow can you still do string walking with? How small a bow can you use the Voltland shooting method with? And some people chimed in and said, you can't do it with a short bow. One guy came in and said he's got a bare Kodiak. Those come in at about 52 inches. And he wanted to know if he could string walk. And immediately, some other people chimed in and said it's too short, you can't string walk with a short bow. This is my 1974 Darton Magnum. This bow is not 52 inches, this bow is 48 inches from tip to tip. And I have been using this shooting method, along with the Voltland shooting method, along with the Voltland string walking method, for more than 20 years on this bow. I bought it used on when Craigslist was still a thing. That's when I got it. It shoots about, it says it's 50, about 55 pounds at my draw. 55 to 58 pounds is what it's at full draw, 31 and a half inches. About 50 pounds at 28. We're gonna see if we can string walk with this. I'm gonna start shooting at 15 meters, which is really the smallest viable shot that you're gonna do as a bow hunter. You're not gonna get a deer that walks up at five meters and walks up at 10 meters. You go watch any Facebook uh, group that talks about traditional archery. I've done surveys out there, 15 meters to 17 meters is where about 90% of all traditional archers, bear bow hunters take their deer. So that's where we're going to start. I've already set my little adjustable knock. It's a little bit higher. It's about one extra arrow width higher from perpendicular than you would have on a regular recurve bow. That's because when you're string walking way down here, three fingers down, you create a little bit of an imbalance between the upper bowstring and the lower bowstring that, can, that causes the arrow to porpoise on its way out. The fastest and simplest way to correct for that, if you're going to be shooting at these shorter distances, 15 meters to 30 meters, is to simply adjust that knocking point up a little bit. You're already doing it on your recurve bows. Just do it a little bit more when you're shooting bare bow and you're using string walking at short distances. No big deal. You can see a video, I'll throw this in the card. I have a video on how to actually make this adjustable knocking point that you can actually move it up, watch. You can move it up and it will stay there. You can slide it down and there's about perpendicular and it will stay there. Those three speed buttons will actually lock in. And what I'm gonna do with my first couple of shots is just see if this is set in the correct position. How will I know? The arrow won't porpoise down up or it won't porpoise up down. It'll shoot nice and straight out of the bow at 15 meters. So let's shoot a couple. Voltland shooting method. Step one, you're gonna choose your gap in fingers the gap between the knocking point of the arrow and the anchoring point of your index finger, the drawing point of your index finger. This will determine the elevation of the arrow. That will determine the range the arrow flies. Step two, you're gonna anchor under your chin. Step three, you're gonna look down the left edge of the bowstring. This becomes your rear sight. Step four, you're gonna put the tip of the arrow right smack on your target. That becomes the front sight. Step five, you're going to make as small a motion release as possible. Small motion, nothing fancy, no flinging, no nothing. Think. Let's go through these methods. I'm gonna shoot dead center at that target. Step one, three finger gap to three and a half finger gap to start. My three finger gap on this bow is 20 yards, 20 meters. So to actually go to 15 meters, I have to go about a quarter, about a half of a finger wider. I have to lift the back end of the arrow up more to tip the arrow down more so it shoots shorter. Step two, draw that neck and anchor under your chin. Three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. Four, tip of the arrow on the center of the target. Five, 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 five. Small motion release. Looks like string walking works for me. If that was a deer, 
and I just hauled off and nailed him in the woods at 15 meters, I'm about this far from hitting the absolute center of his heart and I wasn't even trying. That's the first shot of the day. So the answer to the guy's question that's got the bear Kodiak, can you use the shooting method on a short bow? Hey, your bow is 52 inches, my bow is 48 inches and you just saw me do it. Have fun shooting with your bear Kodiak. But let's continue, let's go out to 20 meters. I saw the balance, it looked pretty good. Let's go out to 20 meters and take the next shot. All right, there I am at 20 meters. For me, that's a more common shot. Most of the deer I've been taking the last, the last 10 years have been somewhere between 25 and 35 yards, bare bow up in a tree or on the ground. Why? Because I can. My point, I'm able to put the tip of my arrow right smack on the center of the target when I release. So I'm not aiming at some point in outer space. It's, and, and with the background of wherever I'm at, confusing me as far as trying to judge the distances. Let's see how I do at 20. We saw that a moment ago, 15 meters was starting with the 20 meter gap, three fingers, and then adjusting a little bit, a half of a finger wider to go a shorter distance. Now I'm back at three fingers exactly for my gap for 20 meters. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back an anchor under your chin. Three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. Four, tip of the arrow on the center of the target. Five. Small motion release. Let's go take a look. Let's see whether or not, that's the first shot of the day at 20 meters. So it's like a cold shot out in the woods. The absolute center of the deer's heart on a 220 pound deer is the center of that little orange, that little orange cross. And I'm what, two inches to the right of it. But the distance was absolutely perfect. 20 meters. And let me ask you guys this. When, what are you the most concerned about when you're shooting bare bow at a deer? Are you concerned about whether or not you miss your arrows a little bit to the right or a little bit to the a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left of center? No, guys. A deer is this wide left to right. It's this big. You can afford to miss a couple of inches to the left, a couple of inches to the right. You're going home with the deer. What are you worried about? You're worried about this. The deer is only this big from top to bottom. You're worried about the distance. You're worried about are you shooting too high? Did you spine it? You're worried if you shot too low, did you skim past the belly? That's where you're worried about where you're missing. And what does string walking give you? Pretty damn good distance. And you got to put the point of the arrow right smack on that target. This is where I was aiming. Right there, I was aiming. The tip of my arrow looked like this in my sight picture. Like that's where I was heading. Not at some point up in outer space where you get the distance wrong. Let's move the camp, let's move back again. Let's go and shoot at, hmm, let's shoot at 25 and then let's shoot at 30. Because for most of you, that's what you need convincing on. Can you shoot at 15? Can you shoot at 20? Can you shoot at 25? Can you shoot at 30? So let's go move the bag out to 25 and shoot again. Okay, now we're out at 25. The deer's probably coming in from about 60. That's when you first see them, if you're lucky. And you're already at 60, you might be doing something like this. You might be saying one finger down at 60 and you're working backwards. And as you see the deer walk past the tree that's nearby you, or you might not even pick it up. You're not gonna take a 60 meter shot. You know where your 40 meter gap is. It's down here at two fingers. So you're gonna wait for that, for the, you're gonna go and set a 40 meter gap right now and then you're gonna start just getting ready. You're not standing there holding a draw, but you're like this, facing the deer. You don't wanna make any left to right motion. This is what deer's eyes are really good at picking up, horizontal motion. Because out in the forest, it's the trees and the critters that are coming after them that are gonna be moving up and down. They're, they're not gonna pay attention. It's, it's the trees that are moving up and down, the branches and stuff, they're not gonna pay a lot of attention to that. They are gonna pay attention to any kind of motion like this. It's gonna make them pick it up. So you're staring at the target, watching them, but you've got 
a 40 meter gap already set. In fact, you've already set this gap by just looking, without even looking at your fingers, you're counting down one finger, down two fingers, like that. And I've actually set this gap without looking at it. Just by feel alone, I can feel the gap in between one finger and in, finger, in between two fingers. Try to do that if you've got stitches on a tab, guys. Can you actually set a gap like that? No. Now I'm watching the deer, and as he comes in, I see, I see him coming in, I see him coming in to from 40 to 30, so I need to know I gotta split my this finger down and go down another half a finger. There's my 30 meter gap. I might take him. He's stopping, he's pausing, he's looking around. Nope, he's coming in a little bit closer. He's coming into 20. I go down another half finger, another 10 meter interval gap, and now I'm at my 20 meter gap. Now I see him coming in just a little bit more. What do I do? Do I go all the way down a half a finger again to 10? or do I keep it at this one? I'm gonna split the difference. I'm gonna go down just a little bit. Now I'm at 15 meters and I take my shot. Do you see how easy it is to set that gap without even having to look at it? And you're gonna be close enough because what you'll see that any one gap that you shoot here is good for about plus or minus almost 10 yards. You can be off in your distance calculation. You're gauging, you could be off by almost 10 yards and the shot is just gonna land about two inches high or two inches low from center. You're still going home with the deer because the deer is this big from top to bottom. If this is dead center, two inches up, you're going home with the deer. Two inches down, you're going home with the deer. You can just pick the one shot and not freak out about it. It's going to land, just like uh, compound archers do this all the time. You've only got four pins on your bow, guys. So how do you take your shot? You say it's close enough to 30 and you put your 30 yard pin on. It could be 40, it could be 20. You know you're still bagging the deer for the same reason. Only your error is going to be a lot less on a compound ball. You know that the, the difference between a 30 meter shot and a 20 meter shot is only going to be about a, a half of an inch on the target, maybe an inch. Anyway, let's shoot at 25. That's going to end up being my 20 meter gap plus a quarter of an inch. That's all the higher up I had to go. A half an inch would have given me 30, so it's a quarter of an inch. And you can be pretty darn close. The human eye can actually split things in half and then split halves into quarters and then split quarters into eighths because it's just a half of a half of a half. And we're really good at dividing things visually into two. In fact, we're good at thirds, come to think of it, but we only need to use halves in this case. So back to the shot. The deer is coming up. I see my gap. I'm setting it to. I'm setting it to two and three quarters fingers. Step one: set your gap. Step two: draw back an anchor under your chin. Three: look down the left edge of the bowstring. Four: tip of the arrow on the center of the target. Five, 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 five. Ooh, good left to right there. Shot about about this high. About this high but I'm also shooting into a headwind now. It could have lifted the arrow up a little bit. Good enough, it serves to, get, to give you the idea that can you string walk with a bow between 15 and 25 meters? And the answer is a resounding yes. Let's go push the bag out to 30. 30 meters, that's going to be a 20 meter gap minus the 10 meter interval gap of a quarter finger. So it's going to be two and three quarter fingers. In all honesty, guys, if you look at the woods that are out here, this is what we shoot in, in Northern Illinois. It's called uh, Oak Savannah. It's groves of oak trees in the middle of meadows. And when you're inside oak trees, they're everywhere. You're lucky if you get a 30 meter shot that's actually clear between you and the deer. In fact, what you're hoping for is that there's at least two trees between you and the deer. Because as he passes behind one of those bigger oak trees, that's when you get to go from this position to this position. And when he passes past the other tree getting closer to you, that's when you draw and you're ready to take the shot. And he doesn't see the motion because his eyes are behind the tree at that moment. He just sees nothing and all of a sudden the arrow comes out of nowhere. But this, a 30 meter shot in those, ki in those kinds of woods, that's about as long as it gets. That 36 meter shot that I told you about 10 years ago, the last time I took this bow out hunting, second to the last time I took this bow out hunting, that was a freak shot that I was on a trail and it was a little bit more open than usual. 
that's why I decided to take it. Let's go back to this one. We'll shoot at 40 still, but it's just a rare shot. All right, so here we are. Step one, choose the gap. Step two, draw back an anchor under your chin. Three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. Four, tip the arrow on the center of that orange. Five, 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 five. Small motion release. And that one looks like it's about this low, which it's getting there. If you're aiming center of mass like I do, I don't aim at the heart, which is already low. I aim center of mass. This, this is a kill shot. And I'm about this far to the left instead, this way. Still a kill shot. You're trying not, if the deer's going this way like I'm imagining, you're getting more towards the innards, towards the entrails, the parts you don't want to bag. You, know, you want the lungs, you want what's in the front half of the deer, but it, it's still going to end up being a kill shot. Let's pause the camera, move out to 40 meters and call it done. Okay, it's out at 40 meters on this bow, that's 20 meters minus shorter two 10 meter interval gaps, which is a quarter of a finger. So that's going to be three fingers minus a quarter minus a quarter, that's a half, that's a two and a half finger gap for this 60, near 60 pound bow to get out to 40 meters. And what I want to stress here is, this bow that was designed already to shoot three fingers under. This is a very common hunting practice like this. So if I'm only going two and a half fingers down, this ends up being about one and three quarters inch difference from nominal, from where it was designed. That's only about one and three quarters of an inch over 48 inches, technically a 50, 50 inch bow, which is only about a 4% change, a 4% variation from normal. There's a lot of other variations that we shoot with on our bows, guys, that are much bigger than whatever variation string walking actually introduces into the bow. You can change from a 100 grain arrow, a 100 grain uh, broadhead or field point, to a 200 or 175 grain, and you've already changed the arrow by 25%. You've changed from the nominal and the bow still shoots. You can change your draw length from anywhere from 26 inches out to mine 31 and a half inches. That's a variation of two plus three and a half. That's a variation of five over 28. That's another 25% variation. The bow still shoots. Bows were designed to handle a range of shooters, a range of mechanics and string walking it's just one of those ranges, guys. And it only end, ends up representing roughly somewhere between five and percent, five and seven percent variation over the nominal, over the, the standard. Compared to arrow weight, compared to draw length, that's minimal. I don't know why you guys all worry so much about it. Anyway, here we go at 40 meters. You're gonna choose step one, choose our gap. Step two. Draw back an anchor under your chin. Three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. Four, tip the arrow on the center of the target. Five, 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 five. Small motion release. Let's go take a look. What I like about this bow is it seems happiest between 30 and 40 meters. Again, that's one of the reasons I took the 36 meter shot years ago. I got it quartering, it was quartering away from me. I got him like behind the rib cage and going in towards the heart. Super shot for me under the circumstances. But let's take a peek and ask ourselves, is that a kill shot? That honestly is what I was aiming for. I was talking, so I was starting to dance around it like this. When I finally released it headed off this way. This distance, guys, that is about six inches from here to here. I'm not lying, but it's not even an inch from top to bottom. And what do we care more about? If there's going to be error in our shot and we're trying to control and minimize that error, what are we concerned about minimizing? Which error? We care about the up-down distance because a deer is this big left to right. From dead center, I can afford to, to be off by five inches in either direction, even six inches, and I'm gonna still hit parts of the deer. It will not survive the shot. It's just a difference of 
Are you, do you think you're gonna drop the deer right there on the spot? And how many of us have hit a deer right in the heart and it still trotted off 70 yards? So that doesn't guarantee, a heart shot doesn't really guarantee a whole lot. There's all kinds of stories about guys hitting it, shooting it right through the heart and the thing still runs off. So if you shoot a little bit to the left and to the right of center, this far, you could get away with this, but the deer is only about this big from top to bottom. So if this is your center, you've only got, if, if this is your center, you've only got about this much to work with. You care more about getting the distance right, and that's why string walking is such a benefit when you're out bow hunting. But what you see right here today, what you saw, this isn't even, that's not even an inch and a half away from dead center, guys. That's a kill shot. You're going home with the deer. So guy with the beer Kodiak, feel free to use string walking. You just saw me demonstrate it today from 15 meters all the way out to 40. And while I'm not hitting the dead center, and I don't hit the dead center even with recurve bows, in competitive environments, you're still missing. People miss, but are, were, did you see nothing but kill shots? The de you're going home with the deer and you were able to actually put the tip of the arrow right smack on the center of mass of the deer, which makes it so much a more of a confident shot that you saw me going out here and shooting at 40 meters like it was nothing. I never thought about missing the bag, never occurred to me. I just thought about how far away from dead center I'm going to get. That's a pretty cool shooting method that anybody can learn that incorporate the Voltland shooting method, five steps, you heard me call them out over and over again, and the Voltland string walking method is made up of fingers that allow you to choose gaps to shoot from 15 meters all the way out to 40. This is Mark Vo with Voland Outdoors. I hope you guys found this particular video informative. Check this card out and see my original video where I did back-to-back -back comparisons of shooting a 66 inch recurve bow, 60 pounds, compared to this very same Darton Mag uh, Magnum that was 48. I think I called it a 44 uh, inch length. I misspoke, it's 48 but it was the same string walking gaps and gave the same result because it was the same draw weight on each of the bows. So the size and the shape of the bow doesn't matter. That's it, that's all I can think of. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and we'll see you out there.